Hey there kiddos and welcome back to the final video for lesson three in module three. Here we are in module three. So anyway, uh, this is the end here. E and F, see the previous video if you would like to uh, check out number one, A through F. And let's do the word problems together. We are creating these area models to help us get uh, like units when they start out being unlike. So solve the following problems. Draw a picture. That's going to be your area model. And write the number sentence that proves the answer. Simplify your answer if possible. So we've got to solve. We need to draw a picture. We need to write a number sentence. We need to simplify. Might be four things. Might be less. Let's start. Jamal used one-third yard of ribbon to tie a package and one-sixth yard of ribbon to tie a bow. How many yards of ribbon did Jamal use? So we've got some here and we've got some here. Thank goodness they're both in yards. Let's take our one-third and combine it with the one-sixth. When you combine, you're using addition because they're different amounts and we only have to combine them one time. And notice that we don't have like units. So that's your first clue. When you get out there and you're doing these problems on your own, you have to think about, is this the same? Because I cannot proceed until they are the same. Make an area model, two boxes, two fractions, two boxes. First, make your first model vertical, shade one. Make your second model horizontal, and remember we've got to have uh, split it. It's got to be three on the top, three on the bottom for a total of six, and shade one. You choose where you want to shade it, anywhere top or bottom is fine. Okay, right or left is fine, in the middle is fine, wherever. As you lay across those fractional pieces, we will create equivalent fractions. So we're going to take these six fractional pieces and put them over here, cut it in half, and have three sections on the top and three on the bottom. Don't change the shading. It's just the number of pieces that we're creating that are different. And then make thirds over here so that we now have a total of three times six, 18 pieces in both. So we have e equivalent fractions and we can now add. So if I had one third, but I laid six over them, then it's basically one times six for six pieces. Hmm. And if I had uh, one out of six pieces and I now turned it into thirds, three times one, hmm, is three. So I have a total of, I can add because I have eighteenths for both, I have a total of six plus three, which is nine. Nine eighteenths what? Nine eighteenths yard. Our last instruction is to simplify if possible. Here's where I want you to start noticing things. I have a few rules and I will make a poster. I'll show you on paper what my Mrs. Setness's rules for simplifying. But this is the classic one you're going to see in fifth grade. This is what I call a, it's doubled. It's doubled from the top to the bottom. It's one up here and it's two down here. When it's doubled from the top to the bottom, it is equal to one half because it's one here and two here. One nine here, two nines here. It makes an equivalent change very quick and easy if you recognize this thing that I call a doubled number uh, right away. So your simplified answer is one half yard. We'll get more into that later, but now we have done what the instructions say and label uh, our answer. So Jamal used one half yard of ribbon. And let's do the last page and the next couple of problems. Over the weekend, Nolan drank one-sixth quart of orange juice, and Andrea drank three-fourths quart of orange juice. How many quarts did they drink together? So here we have our two fractions that have different denominators, one-sixth and three-fourths. They both drank orange juice, so we're going to combine these drinks, but we don't have a common denominator, so let's make one. Put your area models to, down, 
so you can start making those equivalent fractions. First one needs sixths. So in the same way we did the sixths on the previous problem sideways, I did the half, and then we're going to make three on the left and three on the right. And we're going to shade one of them, always identifying the top part as our shaded number. For the second fraction model that we're doing horizontal lines, cut it in half, half the top, half the bottom. Shade three. Any three is fine. I think the book shades the bottom. I don't know why. I just like to work from the top down. So there. Okay, so now we're going to lay over the fraction pieces. I need fourths on my first model. Sideways fourths. And I need sixths on my second model. Half, three sections on the left, three sections on the right. Now look at how many pieces we have. See how this is going to become really tedious after a while because you're making so many pieces and it's really hard for fifth graders to make all these neat boxes. That's why it becomes so much easier just to learn how to make equivalent fractions without the boxes. We'll do that soon enough. Now I have taken my one sixth and I put fourths over it. So notice that I now have four times one or four pieces. And notice that if I had three fourths before and then I laid the sixths over, that I have six times three pieces for a total of 18. Now when I add up 18 plus the four, I'm getting a pretty big number here, 22 out of 24. Now here's another problem where you should look at it and go, hmm, is this the simplest form that I could write? And one of my other rules, my second rule for simplifying, is if I don't have one of my doubles, like you roll a double top to bottom, if you don't have that, even numbers are divisible by two. Okay, all even numbers are divisible by two. So what you can do is you can take your two and divide 22 by two to get 11 and 24 by two to get 12. And now they're only one apart and I know that that is the simplest form. So how do I label my answer? I'm gonna go back and reread. This is all about quarts of orange juice. So how many quarts did they drink together? This They drank 11 twelfths quart together. And that's where, you know, when I took that blue pen on the previous one and I was filling in one, two, three, four, you could go one, two, three, four, and that would all be filled in and that would show you that out of the 24 pieces, 22 would be shaded, but you could simplify that because 11 twelfths is an equivalent fraction. We'll get into that on another video later. No time now. Last problem. Nadia spent one fourth of her money on a shirt and two fifths of her money on new shoes. Spent money. What fraction of Nadia's money has been spent? What fraction of her money is left? So let's take about, uh, let's talk about, let's take about it. We'll talk about it too. Uh, let's talk about when you've got this money that's spent and money that's left, you've got these two pieces. So first of all, we need to find out how much she spent. So take your one fourth and add the two fifths because that's what's been spent. So let's make this model right over here. One fourth, getting a little crooked there. That's okay. Plus two fifths. I'm just telling myself it's okay so I can feel better about my weird squirrely lines. One, two, three, four, five. And shade two. Remember the, numer the numerator on top is telling you how many to shade today. Okay, so there are my two fifths and my one fourth. Now flip flop these and lay them over each other so that I have fifths here. One, two, three, four, five. And I have fourths here, half, and then half the left and half the right. 
Okay, and if they're a little wavy, we will survive. So how many pieces do I have total? Remember, I'm making equivalent fractions, but essentially when you lay these pieces over, you're multiplying the bottom. So I have 20. And now that I, I have laid these fifths over, I see that I have five, one, two, three, four, five, or five times one pieces. How about this one? I have four times two. I have four twice for eight pieces that are shaded. Now, eight plus five gives us 13 twentieths, which is what we're trying to figure out, okay? If this is the shirt and this is the shoes, this is what has been spent. Okay, now we don't know dollars and cents. It's not necessary. We're just trying to find the fractional amount that was spent. So if I have 13 twentieths that has been spent, the next question is what fraction of her money is left? Now here is a new thing that we haven't talked about and the book doesn't introduce. So I'm going to introduce it for you. If this is the total number of pieces or parts, total number of parts, then 20 twentieths would equal all the parts, okay? Which means that's the whole. So 20 twentieths is going to be the whole, that one, the whole big thing that I will subtract from. And I'm going to take the 13 twentieths away. I want to find the difference between what the whole is and what has been spent. And do click subscribe and come back again. I will try to help you as much as possible. Module 3 is super fun. So anyway, what's the difference between 20 and 13? 7. And then this comes over. It's all 20ths here. So 7 20ths of her money is left. So, fun, easy, uh, important, has been spent, do your labeling, take the time. There you go. 13 twentieths of her money has been spent, 7 twentieths of her money has left. I super hope these are helpful. Don't copy them. Remember, make use of them by checking your work. Try first and then come to these only in an emergency. But I do hope they're helpful, and I will see you on the next video. Come back again soon. Bye for now.